Hey, Captain Ross Robertson with Big Water Fishing. You know, you hopefully have seen our videos, shenanigans, podcasts, whatever it may be. Well, here's what we're doing now, if you haven't seen. A project boat. Why would I buy a 20 year old boat? I have no idea. But we really wanted to have a little tiller boat. They're kind of a cult like following. They didn't make them that long. The Ranger 618. We took this just absolutely destroyed, tore up, hit, whatever you want to call it, smashed up boat. And we rebuilt this thing from top to bottom. Part six on the project boat is electronics, a big thing. Obviously it's your eyes, it's your seeing, it's your GPS, it's your sonar, all that good stuff. So check out all the different things that we did on part six with electronics, wiring and install. You know, we're trying to lay out the electronics here and we've got kind of a unique system we're gonna do, but it all starts with, you know, how do we mount these things and have them movable because we've got a lid here to deal with. We still gotta get at rods and stuff. So I've settled on, since I can't put Bert's track on here, it's just too narrow, just too old of a boat for that. We're gonna put actually two layers of Bert's custom tackle track, some 17s here. So I have complete versatility and put a tool holder in there. And ultimately, we're gonna have three 12 inch hummingbird graphs. But again, the track is super, super versatile. And the nice thing is we can through bolt this, so it's gonna be nice and secure, um, but couldn't decide which way to go. So we went both ways and we're gonna have it double up with a track. So we'll show you that in a second. Once we got the track secure, obviously you have a lot more you know, stability and, and options here. We got this Burt's mount, basically just took a little piece of angle on a Burt's riser. And so now I've got one unit that we can move around once you secure that with the two quarter 20 bolts. But now I've got two 12 inch units on this thing and we've got multiple layers. And I went and took another Burt's riser and took a little ram mount. So now I've got really total and adjustability. We don't have anything tightened down firm yet. But that way the live oil lid here can get up. And also when you're fishing, it's the thought process of whether you're watching mega live or a GPS on the way down that you're gonna have your line of sight a lot better. And obviously these things can all be removed but yet are very secure and sturdy and everything's through bolted. So Bird's custom tackle track, always allowing a lot more versatility. So, you know, one of the problems with the older boats is they don't make things like they do now because back then we used to use a lot smaller componentry. Maybe back in the day it was 16 gauge wire. Now we're running quite a bit heavier, 10 or 12. So it poses quite the problem here as we're trying to figure out all these things. We're running mega live, we're running 360, a bunch of units, way more than we used to back in the day. So we actually had to make a bigger hole there. Wouldn't advise this necessarily, but we kind of worked this around like a big spear, a three quarter inch drill bit, so that we could make a little bit more room back there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some six gauge duplex, so that's the positive and the negative, with six gauge wire up to the front, and then we're gonna run a distribution panel with just our electronics on it, so we keep nice clean power. And that's gonna be run right back to the battery switch and a separate battery just for electronics, which are gonna be utilizing the same units as back here. So. Heavy wire, making a little bit of a run. It takes, it's a pain in the butt because this boat really wasn't designed for doing what we're doing. So we've got the wire pulled through. So it's always good. Well, I actually like to leave an extra one of these in the boat for future or in case you mess up, which happens or forget something. One little trick, I like this duplex wire because you got both of them encased here. It's really nice sheath. One little trick is to go back an inch or two, put a slit with both sides with a razor blade and then put something like a screwdriver in there and that way you can feed the wire through. So then when you put your, your feeder wire through there, tie it off and knot it and then put some electrical tape as well. And then maybe step this down a little bit so you have a smaller hole to actually go through that little narrow opening and won't catch as easily. So a couple little rigging tips when you're pulling wire. In. This might be the most unconventional boat rigging trick I've ever done. Old BT and Bob said, let's put a file on the front end of this. And we just worked it back and forth with a rigging wire in this file because the little hole that we had created wasn't quite big enough to easily get this big 6-2 duplex through. So new to me, new to all of us, but a file leading edge to get through some of the foam that's in the Ranger here because this, is, this Ranger is completely encapsulated with foam was enough to get the wire through. So we've got the little kind of distribution panel here. So we've got two battery switches. One is for my cranking battery and we put a little panel in for the things that we're gonna add and keep separate and isolated. And the other distribution panel is just for our electronics and a shut off switch as well that's gonna go to our electric only battery. So really one of the easiest things to do is that, you know, if you can find colored or white starboard, something that sticks out and you can see a lot easier when you're in low light or in the garage, 
and then we're gonna mount this down in there. And it's a lot easier to try to mount this big board one time than try to mount all these little items here, especially in the confined space. So one big piece of starboard like this, two distribution panels, two switches, that's all you need. You know, on the bow of the Ranger here, this was not designed for kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna put three or up to three 12 inch Helix units. We're gonna have the 360, we're gonna have Mega Live, all that good stuff. So that's a lot of cables and a lot of things going on. So me and B team there, Bob, we ran this big old six gauge wire up that we're gonna hook onto this distribution panel. And then we've got an ethernet cable that we ran up as well, that we're gonna daisy chain into the panel that's in the back. So the problem becomes, you know, you've gotta build something to hold all this stuff because while that compartment's pretty good size in there, there's no good place to mount anything. It's the outer side of the, ball, uh, the boat, you really can't drill anything. So I kind of came up with a conclusion here that I'm gonna put a piece of angle aluminum, it's kind of overkill on a piece of starboard and I've mounted that uh, ethernet box from Hummingbird as well as a little distribution panel that's gonna have all my power and everything's be fused all nice. And next we're gonna show you how we put that in there, what we're gonna do. So when I got in here, I basically drilled where I could and we're gonna use a little screw cap here and a big truss screw to make that a little cleaner, the little cap that's gonna cover it up so you won't even see it. And then I had to put a little spacer piece of leftover starboard kind of recycled from an older Ranger boat. And that way, we can put that in there and get this a little more flush so that we can have this mount out there and get where I can bite into it. Uh, when I marked it before, we were a little too high. And I also cut a little access panel in there in case I need to get at that bolt. It's just gonna be a lot easier and maybe to fish a wire through or to see whatever. So really not doing anything else. So next thing is we're just gonna bolt this up and we're gonna get everything wired. It's kind of a little recap here. We've got six gauge tinned copper wire, which is really important. And this is run all the way back to our main battery that's just for electronics with a shutoff switch and such. But we've got the distribution panel hooked up so we got the positive and negative off that. And then we've got the Hummingbird main power cables here. And what I did was I just put a little crimp on there. And it's really important to have a pair of crimpers that are made for heat shrink, not just the regular, because then you're gonna expose the wire and basically have to you know, tape it up or whatever. But it's, it's good to have a pair of crimpers that are made for heat shrink and I would highly recommend that you do use the heat shrink. So then all we gotta do is just put these on here on the positive and negative and I've already pre-drilled this and so I'm gonna put this back on. I'm gonna hook up the ethernet ports and that's pretty much all there is to it, so. So back at the kind of console, if you will, on the tiller, we've got, you know, where we can put up to three 12 inch helix units. So what I did was we ran an ethernet cable from the front to back to basically daisy chain those boxes together. And that's all right down here. And we've got it kind of collected up pretty nice. And we've got all the power cables going back. And so we try to make that because there's gonna be a panel that goes on here with the kind of gauge clusters, which we'll show you later on doing that deal. And then we rock right back to here, which is where I made a little panel out of starboard, made it yellow, white, something you can see real good. And here's my two distribution panels with shutoff switches. So what we're doing here is, here is just for right at the, at the tiller here, this is my ethernet uh, box, this is my power for my graphs, and it has a shutoff switch that goes to my electronics only battery, which is also gonna power that cord that we ran to the front, the large wire. Now this shutoff switch will shut off everything in the boat. It works off the breaker, the panel, everything that Ranger has, as well as the little distribution panel that I added for some of my small add-ons that I want on there, such as the Talon lights and things like that. So that's kind of how we power this deal. It's really not much different than I do in my big boats, just we've got a lot smaller area here to get her done.